uh, Mr. Vasilenka, uh, I would like to ask you about uh, your uh, relations with your main partners, foreign partners, your neighbors. And Kazakhstan is a real master of the multi-vector policy. You managed to maintain an extraordinary balance between Russia, China and the West. Vladimir Putin said the last time he celebrated his uh, last uh, birthday with President Takayev and President Uzbek President Mirzoev. And at the same time, recently in Berlin, the Chancellor Scholz uh, and uh, President Macron, when he was in Astana, uh, these two uh, Western leaders praised Kazakhstan's effort to distance itself from Moscow by preventing sanctions from being circumvented. You managed to navigate uh, in troubled waters by avoiding obstacles, and uh, your captain is very experienced. How has the war in Ukraine and Nagorno-Karabakh over the past almost two years affected the relations of your country with your great neighbors, Russia, Turkey, China, the West? Are the foreign policy priorities of your country changing? How do you see, how do you would like to see the role of each partner involved in the medium mm -hmm. and long term and the balance between these partners? Thank you. Well, uh, we realized ever so clearly um, in the past year and a half that the now famous Malta Vector foreign policy that you mentioned is actually the only foreign policy that we as a country can pursue, a country of 20 million people, a neighboring one country of 1.5 billion people, another country of 140 million people, and uh, a landlocked country, the largest landlocked country in the world. So. You can only build positive, uh, mutually respectful relations with your neighbors and with, with others, and that's the only way forward. Um, in the past uh, year and a half, what we have seen is that um, uh, the West has uh, sort of uh, rediscovered with greater clarity the importance of Central Asia. Um, of course, the relations were developing in the 30 years of our independence, but it's sort of the, the blinds were taken off their eyes in, of policymakers in Brussels, uh, Paris, Berlin, London, Washington. And uh, this intensification of contacts, of political contacts, and the strengthening of these uh, diplomatic efforts on, the, uh, on behalf of the West is very much welcome um, by Kazakhstan, as again, this is. Uh, again part of the of the general equation for our foreign policy because uh, naturally we continue to strengthen develop our cooperation with russia with whom we share the longest continuous land border in the world 7500 kilometers and with china our two largest neighbors generally i think it's important to highlight that um, in our region uh, perhaps three uh, uh, themes, uh, three, dynamic, three dynamics are taking place. One is that uh, the challenges are really aggravating as far as security is concerned, and I mean primarily water security, water scarcity. Uh, that's a big, big challenge for Central Asia. Climate change is another one, and uh, we heard just now uh, from uh, the Emirati minister that uh, if um, uh, Greenland uh, melts even one quarter of it, then uh, the water in the oceans will raise two, uh, by two meters. Well, in Central Asia already, this uh, climate change is twice as fast and as worse as globally. And it's already creating droughts, it's creating problems, etc. Then the, there are things such as a lack of um, uh, agreement between countries such as Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan over their borders. So, and then there is a challenges, uh, set of challenges emanating from an unstable situation in Afghanistan, uh, which, which we should always also not forget about. Um, so that's one trend. The second trend that we are seeing is the uh, growing desire by five Central Asian countries to work together. And you may have seen that we have now held five uh, meetings of the five leaders. Um, also, these Central Asia Plus formats have proliferated like mushrooms under, after the rain. Now there are 11 such platforms 
ranging from uh, uh, the one with the EU to one with Germany, one with the United States, to one with Russia, China, etc. Um, but uh, um, the third, the third uh, challenge, the third dynamics that we see is this growing engagement by the outside partners. So it's not just the West, it's also Russia, it's also China, it's also Turkey uh, that really, really intensified their efforts to be present in Central Asia, to develop cooperation, to invest, to, if you will, to pull uh, ourselves towards themselves. Frankly speaking, uh, we in Central Asia do not like this kind of uh, a, uh, great game speak, a great game terminology again. Suffice it to mention that uh, a few days ago, Bloomberg published a story uh, headlined Macron lands in Putin's backyard. It created such a backlash in our society uh, and people really are up in arms against Bloomberg now saying, look, um, uh, at least in all the reasons why Kazakhstan cannot be and should not be called uh, Putin's backyard or Xi Jinping's backyard for that matter because this uh, denies the agency for the country, denies sovereignty, but it also blinds um, uh, the thinking uh, among the policymakers. So uh, we are in favor of great gain for all in Central Asia. Uh, we think that there is enough room for uh, the constructive engagement by all parties. And you should see how uh, dynamic these relations are developing with the West, with Russia, with China, with Turkey. By the way, the Turkish president, the Azeri president are in Astana today for the 10th anniversary summit of the organization of Turkic states. So these all kind of formats are proliferating and uh, Central Asia, Kazakhstan including, are very much engaged uh, as uh, players in this game, if you will. Thank you very much. Armenia moves in uh, my sense more and more in the same way of diversification and multi-vector policy. For example, Armenia's military and uh, security relations have always been very close to Russia. The uh, um, 102nd Russian military base is located in Gumri. Uh, there are Russian arms sales. Uh, by the way, lastly, uh, Russia uh, didn't deliver it, uh, the weapon already paid for, if I understand properly. And Armenia's border with Iran and with Turkey are protected by Russian border service. At the same time, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan recently did some very strong declaration. He spoke of the need to diversify security relations because Russia failed to fulfill its allied obligations during the escalation on the Armenian-Azerbaijan border. And uh, recently, the Armenian president said on France uh, to TV channels that the country needs a new military partner besides Russia. And France announced in October that it will supply arms to Armenia. So uh, what about your uh, diversification of the foreign policy to clo uh, um, more closer to, uh, to the West, uh, less closer to the Russia? What kind of balance are you seeking for? It's uh, not about uh, getting closer to someone uh, in contradiction with our relations with our partners. But given the situation and given the facts that we went through during the past years, uh, we understood that uh, the need of diversifying our relations and having security component in the relations with uh, our partners of ours is also very important. Um, unfortunately, uh, in 2022, September, when uh, Armenia's sovereign territory was attacked and was occupied, uh, Russia and uh, other CSTO partners of ours didn't have a, even a political will uh, to state that uh, the territorial integrity of Armenia was violated. Um, on, on the contrast, uh, European Union and EU member states came with uh, very strong 
uh, statements, but not only statements and uh, also actions. The deployment uh, of European EU monitoring mission to Armenia Azerbaijan interstate border, and in the mandate of this mission was clearly mentioned that it's deployed to Armenia Azerbaijan interstate border, meaning that. Uh, uh, there, c there cannot be excuses that the border is not delimited, etc., etc., what we heard from our CSTO colleagues. Um, this was uh, uh, an example how we were trying to diversify uh, our the secure, or not to di diversify, but to recreate and rebuild a new security architect architecture for our country. Um, on the other hand, uh, you're correct, we are di diversifying the markets from where we are buying uh, weapons, which are for defensive uh, purpose only. And France is one of the partners, uh, India is another partner of ours. And um, we are determined uh, to cooperate in the sphere with other colleagues as well, uh, bearing in mind that we have a right uh, to protect our sovereignty and territorial integrity, and we don't have any intention to attack, attack any of our neighbors.